What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Now let's roll the clock all the way back to 1965 as we check out AMT's 1965 Pontiac GTO 2-in-1 stock and customizing kit. Now here we can see a nice front three-quarter view of the convertible version of this kit and the wonderful Pontiac wheels right here. This is a Retro Deluxe kit. It has optional mag wheels, all new detailed decals. The model is 125th scale for ages 10 and up and will require paint and glue. You get one plastic model in this box. Now flipping the box up on this side, we can see the rear three quarters. This is built as a hard top, which you also get in this kit. So it says build a slick hard top. This is uh, painted or colored in a light kind of purple color, although my daughter does think it's pink. And here we've got a Texas license plate right on the back. Here we have our Pontiac 389 high performance engine with the four barrel carburetor underneath this wonderful air cleaner. And you do have the option of building it as the tri-carb version, which was also a factory stock option. Here we have our Goodyear Polyglass GT tires with the white letters printed on, as well as our mag wheels. And then for the stock, we have the Pontiac Rally wheel with the center cap, as well as the red line tires. Here's our convertible boot if you want the top down, and our stock roof for the top up. And then we also have this really wonderful custom roof with the sunken in rear window. The bottom of the box shows a wonderful parts breakdown, which is really awesome and a good thing from round two. We also get this wonderful QR code. Have any of you actually clicked on these with your camera and see where they lead to? I never really get a chance to. I see that GM has also updated its logo for the uh, 2020s. And then here we also have our round two logo. And this model kit is for ages 10 and up and will require glue and paint. So now let's open up the lid of this model kit. And I've really been waiting for this for a while. I bought the model a week before I went on holidays and I was going to make a video for it, but I didn't get a chance to. So here we are now. So first off, we get the wonderful chrome parts tree that's all in a bag. The glass components are also in a bag, which is good because it stops it from getting scratched. Here we've got the body and the undercarriage and the interior tub in there. There's our tires and wheels as well as the metal axles. Then here we've got the rest of our white components, including those two roofs that you can see there. And then we've got our instruction sheet down below and our decal sheet, which I will let Danny the dog review along with the instructions. So now let's go in and check out a dog's life as Danny the dog gets to take a look at the instruction sheet. Hey everybody, it's Danny the dog back again, back in action after a little vacation of my own. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the AMT 1965 Pontiac GTO. And yeah, like Trevor said, it's a dog's life. Anyway, Trevor, if you can just uh, put that pointer stick in my mouth, and then we'll go over the instructions. Hmm, thank you. So here we are on the front page of the instruction sheet, and I'm just going to use the voiceover mic on this. So here we have the wonderful illustration of our 65 Pontiac GTO, and then the important things we need to read on assembling our model kit. This is in both English and French, if you're up in Canada. Here's all the symbols we will see as we move along into the build. And then we've got this wonderful paint color callout sheet as well. And a little bit on our exterior colors and our interior colors, as well as all our General Motors and Goodyear sponsorship details down here. Panels one and two show our engine block going together. So in this case, we're actually starting off with our fan belts and pulleys. So there's our fan, our fan belt, and our alternator. Now this is chrome plated. One thing it's missing is the bracket which would come off here and mount on the engine. So you can always cut your own out of some flat sheet of styrene. And here we've got our engine block with right and left hand sides. There is an opening here for the metal axle to go through. And there we have our cylinder heads going on the top. There is also the paint color callouts here on the block, just so that you paint everything the correct colors. So here we have our stock Pontiac engine going together, and I do believe this is the high performance 389. Now Pontiac also had a 421 cubic inch engine, but I'm not really sure which one this actually represents. 
there are some smarter people out there in internet land that will let me know down in the comments below. But anyway, I'm just going to go with it being a 389 for the simplicity of the video. So here we've got our chrome air cleaner which drops down onto our intake manifold. Here we've also got our chrome uh, valve covers and then that shows our fan belts and pulleys being glued onto the front. Now if you notice all the uh, timing chain covers and our oil filter and oil pan are all part of that engine block with the transmission from step two. Now here we have the custom engine block going together, but don't be fooled because Pontiac also offered this in their cars back in 1965. This is the tri-carb option with three two-barrel carburetors and the little chrome air cleaners which drop on the top. Now both these items are chrome, although you might want to uh, tone down your carburetors a little bit just to make it look more realistic. Here we have the special intake manifold. We also get a distributor dropping in place and we use our Pontiac valve covers, which are chrome. These are the stock ones, of course. And then we attach our fan belts and pulleys up to the front of the engine block. Now, for those of you out there that like all the extra detailing, here is the correct firing order for our 1965 Pontiac engine right off the distributor here and off onto each of the spark plugs. Now here we see our wheels going together. Now this is the stock wheel, which is the Pontiac Rally type wheels. So here we've got our wheel and the center cap is molded in place. So you just want to paint the slots with flat black so they look like uh, see-through, you know. And then you put your wheel here, push it into the tire and you get this lovely wheel back. Now for the custom, these wheels here are kind of vector style, I, or something like that, turbine style. These came out in the 70s, so for an earlier version of this custom. However, AMT under round two has added in these nice Hurst mag wheels, which are more period correct, and were used on the GTO. So here you pop it into the tire. Now, I do believe this is the Goodyear tire. And then you can pop that into the back of the uh, wheel retainer here. And that makes up your entire wheel. Panel 5 shows our interior going together. Now here you have your wonderful dashboard. And you've got your stock steering wheel and column. And over here you've got your custom steering wheel and column. This almost has like that grippy stuff that uh, you used to be able to get a Canadian tire wrapped around the wheels. Remember that? It was like leather and then it had a leatherette strap and you went all the way around there. Yeah, um, my dad had one of those in his Buick. Anyway, uh, there we've got the seat belts. Now this is the custom four-point harness seat belt. However, these little things down here are the stock seat belt. There you've got your stock bucket seats and your shifter and the interior tub which includes the center console and our pedals as well as the door panels in the rear seat. Now in panel 6 you add in the exhaust manifolds onto the side of the engine block and then you drop your engine down into the one piece chassis, put your metal axles through into the holes and add in your fully built wheels. Now the custom version is very much the same. You put on your exhaust manifolds onto the side of the engine block and notice the sweep on these manifolds is a little bit different from the stock version. Then you drop your engine down into the engine bay on the one piece chassis and here we're using those 70s style vector wheels and they're being popped onto the metal axle. However, the Hurst wheels would look really good on here instead. Now here in panel 7 we see our body assembly and there is this brace right across here which has to be removed. That's just so that the uh, windshield pillar doesn't get squashed up in the molding process. It does say note if using a roof attach it now and paint it body color as an entire unit. Now here we have our hood which goes into place here and you'll see this tall clip right there. So any of you old guys that remember building this back in the day you know exactly what those two clips are for. There used to be a hood hinge clip that went into the models, but uh, AMT kind of got rid of that because I don't know about you, but anytime I've tried to open that, the first thing that pops off is that clip, and then it's kind of useless. So what's the point of it anyway? 
However, let us know if you remember those in the comments down below. Now in panel 8, we see the body getting completed. There are some chrome grills which pop into the openings here in the body. Then we've got our firewall with the battery and the washer bottle. And then our firewall going in place back here. Panel 9 shows our completed body getting the windshield put in place. And then the interior tub goes up in there. And here we have these nice little retainer circles which will pop up onto the pegs underneath. And then our entire chassis gets glued up underneath the body. Over here in panel 10, we see our rear bumper getting the taillights put in place. There's also a license plate right here, which will glue in place. There are some decals, it looks like, that go into here. And uh, then that goes onto our body. And we have an upper radiator hose, which glues onto the engine block. Panel 11 shows our body being glued together in the final assembly steps. Here's where you have the option of using either the stock hard top, and there's your glass going in place, or you could use the swept back Dukes of Hazzard General Lee type of roof and put in your rear window there, or you could use your convertible boot instead. Now here we've got a nice piece of chrome trim which glues into our hood scoop. Here we have our front stock bumper with the vertical headlights, and on our turn signal lenses, you can either paint them with a transparent color or use a decal in that place. And then here we have our license plate decal or if you want a custom rolled pan and uh, headlights. Now this has been returned to the kit from long ago. You could use those in their place of the front bumper. So now Trevor's going to show you the plastic parts because after all, it's a human's life. Thank you, Danny, for that wonderful intro. So here we have our GTO. And yes, you are right, it is a human's life. <laughs> anyway, there's the wonderful script on the back that says GTO. We do have the wonderful Pontiac GTO emblem up here, but as hard as I could try, I couldn't really see what the engine displacement was off of here. So it's very tiny. The door handles look pretty wonderful. Remember, this is a kit from a very long time ago. But overall, it's held up, and I do think round two did a good job of revitalizing it. There's the Pontiac Arrowhead right in the center of the grill where it belongs. And again, you will have to remove this bar out of here. That's just so that when they mold this, the windshield doesn't cave in because there's nothing holding it back from doing so. And there you get the nice windshield wipers on this cowl vent. Again, really awesome stuff. Underneath you can see the long pins, so maybe at one point this was a promotional model, which got converted into a parts model afterwards. There are some holes underneath here as a drilling guide for antennas or that kind of thing, and some harsh mold marks as well as a bit of a ripple thing in here from the molding process. That would actually be on the tool of the mold. It looks like somebody ground something off, probably to get rid of the back posts from the chassis which would be there. We can take a look at that in a second. Overall a bit of flash but nothing that couldn't be cleaned up. Next up we have the Pontiac interior bucket and there are some mold marks on the floor in all four corners. Now inside we have the automatic style pedals with that nice GM brake pedal in there for the automatics just like in my 72 Oldsmobile Cutlass. Here we have the center console molded in place with the shift gate up on top there and then the wonderful seats. Now you want to make your front buckets match that angle in there, um, just so you know, <laughs> so you don't have one angle going this way and your front seat going that way. There's the door panels in there with the door handles. Again, very soft on the sides, but that's sort of what you get when you do a tub. Underneath there's a part number there, no mold marks, and the uh, information stamped in here from around two, the date of manufacture and so on, which again, if you paint all that flat black will just disappear. But overall, this is really held up for the vintage. Here we have our one piece chassis pan. And uh, unfortunately there isn't a ride height adjustment here so that you could raise this up or lower it or whatever. The holes are actually set in place at that one sort of uh, stance, I guess you'd call it. Then here we have our exhaust molded in place, so you're going to have to paint those very carefully. 
Same with the drive shaft, the rear axle, and the gas tank. Uh, there isn't really any evidence that this had these screw mounts going through. Usually there's like a half circle in here somewhere, and that's where the screws would be. Overall, I do think the underpan looks quite nice considering its simplicity. So this is a wonderful weekender kit. The only downside again is mold marks sitting here and here, which might interfere with the uh, radiator support. Uh, a couple, well, I don't know if you should remove those. You got to test with the oil pan because that's where the engine's going to glue into. Mold marks in here on the top of the A-arms. And then in here, this might be a problem for your interior. It might not. Again, test fit everything before you finalize it and glue it together. These mold marks, you can also sand off the tops of the wheel arches. But overall, again, this is a really nice looking kit and will look great once it's finished and is simple for the beginner transitioning into glue kits. Now here I have the three pieces, the interior, the body, and the chassis all together. This is just a dry fit to show you actually how good this fits together. Now if you look, there's no real gaps in between the door panels and the body, so that's good. It is a little bit down in the back here, but you're going to be using that convertible boot or even one of the uh, rear roof panels. The interior, the uh, yeah, the body fits well to the chassis, but you're going to have to file down here and here and there and there. That's where it was on the parts tree, but it should give you a nice little tight fit along here if you were to glue, put glue along the sides and then pinch the body together to glue it in the final assembly stages. So overall, this is a nice clean kit and easy to assemble. Here we have the parts tree for our 65 Pontiac GTO, which shows the engine components. One thing that I did notice is, unlike in the interior where you had the two pedals for your automatic transmission, this in fact is a manual transmission it has a little door on the side for all the linkages, so that's how I can tell. But here you get both intake manifolds, as well as your cylinder heads, your battery, your windshield wiper or radiator overflow bottle, and your distributor, as well as the fan and the belts and pulleys. So let's just take a look at the detail on this. It does have nice features to it. There's the fuel pump up front, as well as the starter motor and that transmission. There's the oil filter and our oil pan molded in place, as well as the front timing chain cover. So when you glue that together, make sure you sand down all the seam lines so everything looks smooth and like individual components. There's our uh, Delco battery, as well as the exhaust manifolds, your choice of the ones for the custom or the stock version. And then you've got your cylinder heads, as well as the belts and pulleys and the upper radiator radiator hose and then there's those little locks for the interior on the pegs. On this parts tree we have our firewall which includes our master cylinder and our heater on this side. Here we have our radiator support wall with the radiator molded in place. This is a rolled pan for the custom version and then we have our deep dish wheels for the custom as well as that steering wheel and console. And then here we've got those retainer clips now, I'm not really sure if the bigger ones are for the car body or the smaller. We'll have to figure that out when we put the model together. But again, the detail on here is quite nice and crisp. Does look pretty correct. There are mold marks on the back here, which you'll have to remove. There's our wheel backs and the little hole for the metal axle. These will have to be trued up as well. And our steering wheel with a bit of flash in there. But overall, not too bad for the vintage. Here we have the parts tree that makes up our interior components as well as the hood and our stock wheel backs. So here we have the front bucket seats and all our little stock seat belts as well as the four point race harness. Again, really nicely done. You can see the angles in there and they have the Pontiac arrowhead on them as well, which is really cool. A little bit of a mold release agent. There, I got it off. Underneath you see your hood mat and then mold marks in the four corners, which again need to be removed. Uh, overall though, really nicely done. Bit of flash, but again, like I said, for the vintage, what do you expect? Here we have our roof panels, our dashboard and steering wheel. So this is the stock style roof, which was sort of the hardtop convertible roof because it did look like a convertible roof that was put up 
only it was a hard top welded to the body. Here we've got our custom roof, which sort of has that sunken in Dukes of Hazard charger type rear window. And then there we've got our dashboard, our steering wheel, and the downed top. So let's just take a look at our dashboard. So right away we see the four instrument clusters, as well as our heater controls. Down below is the radiator. And here we've got our dashboard as well as a little GTO emblem. And there is a vent on the top, which is really quite nice. There's our stock steering wheel with the four spokes and our convertible boot folded down. Underneath, it's a little bit uh, kind of messy there with all the different things going on so that you can clean up with your hobby blade just to make it easier to glue. Overall, these panels are quite nice and look really awesome. So here we've got our roof sections and they do have the ribs molded in place and underneath they did try to remove these mold marks but you'll have to further try to remove them. And then here these are actually little side lenses for uh, lighting up the back so don't remove them they're not mold marks. Overall again looks really nice there's a little bit of uh, mold muck in here which will have to be taken care of with your number 16 hobby blade. But overall, all these components look really nice and again have held up due to the vintage. And here's the parts trees that make up our chrome components. These are the additional Hurst mag wheels that have been put in. They are separate actually. So there you go. And then here we have all our grills and front headlights as well as the stock and custom wheels and our valve cover. So let's move this on up to the camera and take a look. Again, these are really uh, 1970s style wheels in here from a previous release. There's our tri-carbs, our stock rally wheels, the rear bumper, and again, it's got the nice Pontiac logo in there. You'll need to add a bit of a black wash into the center there, but keep your chrome clear for your rear turn lights and brake lights. And then here we've got our front bumper with the uh, quad headlights molded in place. You'll have to sort of tint these with some paint or something just to make them look more realistic. There's our GTO grills and the little insert for our front hood scoop. And then we've got our valve covers in there. So again, really nice. Our stock air cleaner and the chrome air cleaners for the tricarb version. Underneath, not too much on the mold marks, just a bit in here, which you can dig out. Remember to paint this all uh, flat black. So when you turn the car over, you don't see the chrome. You want to just see it on the back here. So again, really nicely done. Let's just take a look at the Hurst wheels. Again, really awesome stuff. These were uh, factory options, I do believe, on some of the GTO packages. Now, they are a bit long in the axles in the back, so you might have to uh, clip those down. I'm not too sure. But when you put the wheels together, you can always size that up. So again, the chrome looks really nice on here, and the addition of those factory stock kind of Hurst wheels are amazing. Now here we have the components that make up our glass and our red turn signals at the back, and brake lights. Now I'm going to leave these in the bag this time around just to protect it from scratches. But there you can see our front windshield, and it's got the wings molded in the side. And then we've got our back windows as well. This is actually an interesting piece. Uh, I guess that's for our stock back top. I'm not too sure. But anyway, there's our red turn signal lenses. And again, these look really nice. You just need to clip them off, clean them up, and put them in the back bumper. Uh, there is quite a bit of flash, but that shouldn't be a problem to remove. Overall, these look really great. One thing that is really cool about the Round 2 1965 Pontiac GTO is the reworking of the tires. Now down here I've got the original tires that would have come with this kit. First off we've got the Firestone tire which is the same tire they were using in all the 1930s model car kits. The tread is just straight lines. It does have the pie crust on the edges and raised Firestone lettering along the side right there and a little button down at the bottom. That's what they used to have. But now look at this the nice tampo printed red line tire. The sidewall is quite different. The tread is tighter, which looks more in scale with the actual car, as opposed to the earlier style. Again, really nicely done. The, the rubber color even looks correct. Here we've got the Goodyear Polyglass GTs, and they had raised letters up here and down there, which was okay when you needed to paint them. And there's the tread pattern. 
And some of these actually had a spider inside, which you had to cut out carefully with your hobby knife. And that was always a pain because there was a bit of a ridge in there and whatnot, little bumps that didn't quite work with the wheels. So you had to get rid of those. But now take a look at these. This is Tampo printed, so there's no raised letters up top. And again, the tread pattern is actually looking more scaled to the car instead of this great big chunky style pattern. Again, round two really did a nice job on retooling all these wheels and tires from the originals that were included in the earlier kits. Hey everybody, it's Danny the Dog back again with the decal sheet. And wow, I'm going to say that uh, AMT under round two, they really improve the decal sheet from stuff in the past. Look at this, you get three colors of pinstripes, red, white, and blue, that you can put on the sides of your cars. You also get trunk key decals. Which they give you four, so you can use these on any other cars if you want in your collection. Then they give you the Hearst symbol for the wheels, GTO symbols, there's the 389 four barrel decal for the air cleaner, little AMT decals, there's the Hearst there, so you can build a Hearst version of the GTO. Then GTO side emblems, as well as all these license plates you get. You get the front lights here. They give you three in case you lose one. These are headlights, so again, really awesome stuff. There's that Texas license plate, the 1965 license plates, California burner. I can't really read that one. There's GTO. Look at this, you get three different dashboard inserts, so you really don't have to paint the gauges. You get a wood grain, you get a aluminum, I guess, and a black one, and then the Pontiac arrowheads. So again, really awesome. There's those rear backup lights as well. Awesome decal sheet, and I'm glad that round two did this. Now here I just zoomed in a little bit on those instrument clusters, and again, look at how awesome that is. And for you license plate fans, this one's actually from Michigan. I had to take a closer look at it. EA2097. There's your California burner and your Texas CTR470. And then, of course, factory plate 1965. Now here we have my original build of the 1965 Pontiac GTO. And I built this when I was quite young. This is a 1986 edition kit that was molded in brown plastic. I attached the hardtop roof on here, but didn't have too much success. I tried to use some spot putty up in here, but uh, didn't quite know how to sand it like I do now. I added on the white wall tires because that was sort of a thing that my dad got me all interested in. And then I hand painted my own license plate up front here. Now this is my second attempt at the Pontiac GTO. I'm not quite sure if it's actually the same brown plastic model kit. Now what I did here is I used the wheels and tires from a monogram model car on there, just to make it a little more, you know, late 80s modern, I guess. The GTO emblem on the back was from a rub down transfer sheet for use for, um, what was it, the Cub Car Rally cars. I painted the interior blue and brown, gave it kind of a neat little look. Now again, the engines under here are the uh, stock Pontiacs with the air cleaner. They did not have that tricarb package, and at this stage in time they also didn't have the custom front end. They did include that custom fastback roof, but that was about it. License plate decals again are from somewhere else, a different model car. And uh, the decal sheet is not as good as the round two one, of course. I can't really remember much decals in here at all. Maybe just the plates. And here's a little peek into the engine bay. Now, back in the day, we actually did not have the internet. So trying to find colors for these was quite difficult, unless somebody you knew owned one. So the engine is a bit darker blue than what it should be. But again, what can you do? And here's the engine bay of the original yellow Pontiac. And as you can see, I painted the engine green. Like I said, there was no real reference back in the day, and the AMT instructions really told you nothing. Here's how I uh, tried to do that seam line on the roof. And again, you can see it is kind of not up to my modern standards. Let's put it that way. Well, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing video of the AMT 1965 Pontiac GTO 2-in-1 model kit by Round 2. Now, how would you build this kit? Would you build it with the tricarb setup? 
or with the four barrel carburetor? Are you going to build it the Hurst version? Are you going to build it with the top up or down? Which custom top are you going to use? And are you going to use that rolled pan front end? Let us know down in the comments section below and have fun building your model. If you want to get some other model car kits and see what's available in our store, check it out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'll leave a link down here to our website so you just click that and go to our model car page. Now don't forget to subscribe over here and click that like button so our video will get more likes and more subscribers. And if you really want to help us out financially for $3 a month, click that join button and you become a YouTube Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage member and you'll get your names in the credits coming up at the end. So until next time everybody, happy model building and have fun out there.